A few months ago, I moved to a town in the southern parts of the United States. I wanted to move to this town since it was much closer to my job. I work in a distribution warehouse that lies between the nearby major city and the town itself. My choices for residence was either an apartment in the city, which wasn't something I'd enjoy, or search for a place in this rural town. While I was looking for houses for sale, my selection was quite limited. Not many people here were looking to sell their houses. That being said, there were two houses that were up for grabs. One was close to the center of the town itself, though when I did my walkthrough of it, I was, well, let's just say not impressed. The other house was much more appealing, though the location wasn't the best. The house butted right up against one of the many farms that dotted the area, thus making it seem very isolated. The rows of nearby corn created a sort of natural wall around the property. This was the first thing I noticed about the house as I pulled off the main road and onto the long driveway. I never really enjoyed the thought of living out in the sticks, but tried to look on the bright side. The peace and quiet would be a big plus, as well as not having to worry about anyone bothering me. I met up with the realtor and after an hour or so of looking at the house, I took it. I filled out all the necessary paperwork and by the end of the month, I had completely moved in. The house itself wasn't very large. It was a basic single story, three bedroom house. That being said, it was more than enough for me. Although the exterior at a glance seemed somewhat weathered, the interior was fully remodeled. That was a major selling point for me. I quickly got settled in and before I knew it, the house I bought started to feel like a home. Days seemed to meld into weeks seamlessly. I had gotten myself into a routine which aided in the time progressing faster. Before I knew it, the summer months seemed like a distant memory as the fall weather showed up in force. Despite my living in the south, it was still on the northern end of the state, which resulted in cooler weather and fallen leaves. During autumn, I often thought back to my time as a child, running around in various costumes trick-or-treating and shoveling mountains of candy into my mouth. The first of October had arrived, and I was on my way home from work when I spotted something odd regarding my neighbor's farm. It seemed like the owner was having some sort of bird problem, as a newly erected scarecrow loomed partially above the corn. I could just vaguely make out the outline of a body suspended in the air as my headlights passed over it. Looking out of my passenger window, I could still see the dark outline of the scarecrow in the distance. For a split second, it looked like it had moved slightly. When I focused my eyes again, however, it seemed utterly stationary. I rubbed my eyes, thinking that work had simply taken its toll on me. I arrived home not long after and called it a night. The next morning when I was walking to my car to head to work, I looked out towards the cornfield. I could see the scarecrow much clearer despite the overcast sky above. It was quite a distance from my house, and I could still only see its upper torso through the corn. What I could see of it, it seemed quite ratty, like someone had taken decades-old clothing and haphazardly sewn it together. Straw protruded from its neck and wrists, giving its silhouette a jagged appearance. I couldn't make out exactly what its face looked like, but I had no time to look further as I had to leave for work. A week had passed without issue and each day I'd head out to my car, I'd spot that scarecrow silently doing its job. Even though the scarecrow had been out there for a few days, I thought back to earlier and I hadn't noticed any birds around the crops themselves. It seemed like the scarecrow wasn't necessary, or perhaps it was just really good at scaring the birds away. Another consideration that crossed my mind was Halloween decoration though I doubt many children would come all the way out here to trick-or-treat. About a week and a half ago, I noticed something strange about that scarecrow. I had the day off from work, so I spent that time doing chores and generally cleaning up my house. When I took the trash outside, I saw that the scarecrow had gotten significantly closer to my house. It was so noticeable that it took me by surprise when I saw it. It was nearly on the edge of the farm now, 
I wondered if my neighbor had moved it for some reason. I wandered over to the edge of the cornfield and scratched my chin as I stared up at it. I could see the face much better at this distance. It was a brown burlap sack with roughly stitched X's for eyes. A small slit in the burlap seemed to be its mouth. Overall, it didn't seem like whoever made this thing put their heart and soul into it. I turned to walk away and just as I did, I heard a crackling of twigs behind me. I stopped and turned back, but the scarecrow was just as motionless as ever. I kept a constant watch on it as I made my way back towards my house. Five days ago, I was on my way home after a late shift at work. As I rounded the corner onto my street, I could already see the cornfield growing in the distance. The entire field seemed to sway like numerous arms waving in the wind outside. While I drove, I occasionally cast glances towards the field to see if I could spot the scarecrow. I couldn't. As I pulled into my driveway, I angled my car so its headlights faced the field and to my surprise, the scarecrow was gone. I quickly scanned the horizon to see if I could spot its outline, but it had vanished. I thought that perhaps my neighbor had taken it down for some reason. As I stood there looking around, I thought I could see some corn swaying more than the rest, but quickly disregarded it and went inside. Two days ago, something unexplainable happened. I had yet another day off from work. This time, I decided to just enjoy my time off instead of spending the day doing chores. I spent the majority of my morning watching movies and TV shows. Before I knew it, the setting sun outside had changed the sky to a burnt orange. During a break in my media binge, I thought I heard a sound coming from my backyard. I walked over to my back door and peeked out of one of my windows. My eyes grew wide as I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Standing in the clearing that is my backyard was that scarecrow. How it was standing on its own was beyond me. Its feet were bowed out to the sides, while its knees were slumped together. Its shoulders drooped down to lifeless arms which dangled at its sides. The head was canted to the right like it had no support from its neck. I stared at it while the twilight sky succumbed to the night. As soon as the last rays of light faded, I watched as this thing started to twitch. Its body seemed to jostle and move slightly, like the oncoming night was doing something to it. I turned away from the window for a moment to make sure my back door was locked. When I glanced back through the window once more, it wasn't there. I scanned my entire backyard, well, as much as I could with the little light outside anyway, but the scarecrow was no longer there. I tried to rationalize that my mind was playing tricks on me, that ever since I saw that scarecrow, it's been subconsciously stuck in my head. I walked through my house, double-checking to make sure all my doors and windows were tightly fastened. I could feel my body slowly starting to become more sluggish, and decided it was time for bed. Nearly three hours after I had fallen asleep, however, I was awoken to a noise coming from my kitchen. It sounded like something had gotten knocked off my counter. I sat up in a daze and tiredly rubbed my eyes. I absentmindedly got out of bed and walked out into my living room. My legs stiffened as I saw the silhouette of a person standing in my kitchen. Once my eyes adjusted to the lightlessness of my house, I could see the bits of hay sticking out of its neck and torso. The scarecrow had somehow gotten into my house. I could feel my hands becoming clammy and my throat tighten as I stared at it. It took a shuffling step towards me. The crunch of hay under its weight made my skin crawl. As it approached, its mouth began to open. The small line that had been cut into the burlap seemed to extend. Inside was a swirling mass of worms and maggots that seemed to crawl out onto its face. Through the insects, I could see what vaguely resembled teeth though they were completely black and spaced apart. They kind of looked like shark's teeth to me. It raised its limp arms towards me and continued its advance. My legs seemed to slowly inch backwards without my command. I wasn't sure what to do. 
I had never been put in a situation like this before. Its gloved hands rested upon my shoulders and it brought its open maw right to my face. Some of the worms and maggots spilled out onto my face and chest. Feeling them crawling on me sent a jolt to my body and I brought my arms up to shove this thing away. When I did, it snapped its teeth at me like a metal bear trap. I braced my legs and pushed hard, which broke me free from its grasp. I turned away from it and ran from my front door, making sure to grab my keys and wallet from the coffee table nearby. As I ran, I swatted at the bugs crawling on me until I could no longer feel them. I made it safely to my car and when I started it, my headlights turned on. In the open doorway of my home, I could see that scarecrow still standing there. I backed out of there and drove all the way into town. I found a hotel to stay at for the time being and I've been here ever since. Yesterday, I drove back to the house during the day to investigate. There was absolutely no sign of the scarecrow anywhere, nor were there any worms on the floor of my kitchen. What was more odd was when I inspected the back door. I found it to still be locked. Everything in my house was still locked aside from my front door, which I had used to escape. I have no idea how that thing managed to get inside my house in the first place. I drove over to my neighbor's house shortly after and an older man answered the door. I inquired about his scarecrow that he had put up in his field, though he only returned a confused glance when I asked about it. He said that he hadn't put up any scarecrow in his field whatsoever. Confused, I simply apologized for bothering him and left. I'm not sure where that scarecrow came from or why it targeted me in the first place, but if any of you out there see a random scarecrow in a field, leave it alone and get as far away from it as possible before you wake up one night and find it standing directly over your bed.